welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the top five cities to visit when in New Zealand. Coming in at number one is Auckland, the largest city in all of New Zealand and the largest city on the North Island. Auckland has a great historical past, but what makes it really unique is it's based around two large harbors. To the east is the Tasman Sea, and to the west is the Pacific Ocean. The main landmark is the Sky Tower that has views overlooking Viaduct Harbor, where you can travel to several islands Sailing around Viaduct Harbor and Auckland is very popular. In fact, there is a museum there along with another museum dedicated to the Maori people. Now, the food scene in Auckland is fantastic. I love the seafood there. Plenty of bars and cafes to explore and gardens and parks near downtown. So be sure to check out the Seaside Promenade as well. Lots to do in Auckland, a really friendly city. It's one of those cities that's kind of got that outdoor rural feeling, but also got that modern convenience. And here is a look at the seaport and a look at the Sky Tower, which is also a casino and a mall. And people do bungee jump off the top of that thing. And next up is Christchurch, the largest city on the South Island with a population of around 350,000 people. Now it is coastal, but inland off the river called Avon. Now the history of Christchurch is rooted in English heritage. Christchurch is a modern city with an old world feel. It does have quite a bit of shopping and a great food scene if you're into that. When it's there, it feels like a young person city. I would call it almost a college town. Christchurch has made world news due to earthquake damage. There was a 7.1 in 2010, and then there was another big one in 2012. There is a museum that talks about the Christchurch earthquakes. Uh, the area around there is very seismic. It is located to the east of the uh, Southern Alps, as they're known, this big mountain range of glaciers. And uh, it is really dramatic to see the Southern Alps. If you're on the South Island, you would want to see that. But that is one thing that Christchurch is known for. If you do get a chance to go to the South Island of New Zealand, you will want to stop in Christchurch. Also, if you can, take the train and head south or north. If you do get a chance to go to the South Island of New Zealand, you will want to stop in Christchurch. Also, if you can, take the train and head south or north. Heading down south, actually, to another town called Dunedin. So this is one of those towns that's really close to Antarctica. Uh, it's small town. It definitely has more of an English feel to it. I mean, you almost feel like you are in England. It's so far south and cold. Now, one of the things that Dunedin is known for is the penguins. So when you go down there, try to see some penguins, get out there to the uh, islands around the area. When you're going to the city center, there is a good food scene. If you're a foodie, again, uh, coastal, if you can go to the beaches and then just up the road, there is the world's steepest road. So that's in a neighborhood you can walk up and man, and is it, it is steep. But as you can see, a lot of the old architecture is still in place from the English all across the town really enjoyed the greenery, but it is a little bit chilly down here. Although the gardens do grow great. There is a Japanese garden that you'll want to check out. Uh, if you're a botanist or someone who likes plants, Dunedin's going to really satisfy you. 
And here is a look at that Japanese garden. And then we'll head over across the town to the world's steepest road. You can see me here hiking up the stairs and it takes about 15 minutes and you do work up a sweat and get a great workout. And here we are at St. Clair Beach, just next to the Otago Peninsula. It does get chilly here, like I told you, but in the summertime, you can go down to this beach. All right, heading about two hours inland to one of my favorite cities or towns, if you want to call it that, in New Zealand is Queenstown. So Queenstown has an old historic pioneer mining uh, presence, history, and in recent years, it's actually become a adventure mega center for people who come from far and wide to do things like ride helicopters to glaciers, jet boats up and down rivers or lakes. And this here is a look at the shot over jet boat going up and down the shot over river, which is where a lot of the mining took place. The city of Queenstown is situated on a big lake called Wakatipu in the mountain range known as the Remarkables. Quite the name, isn't it? And it is sitting at a high elevation of 1,310 feet. Now, the downtown city center area is a great place to grab a beer, have a cup of coffee, get lunch, get dinner, have breakfast. I really liked it down there. It was one of my favorite places in all of New Zealand to just hang out and relax. Also, hiking around here is abundant. Lots of places to hike. And it's pretty close to Milford Sound and some of the other adventure areas on the South Island. Majority of the residents in Queenstown, they are in their middle age, but the people you will most commonly come across in Queenstown are young college age kids. It's a really popular place for backpackers and the young people, they just come to the beach here at this Lake Wakatipu and they just sit back and maybe have a couple beers or a good laugh. And that's one of the popular things to do is just go down to that beach and relax. Not too much swimming in there, although some dogs will get in there and some people actually, but for the most part, it's too cold to get in because it's off the glacier. So bungee jumping off the suspension bridge is really popular down there, as well as whitewater rafting. As you can see, that's another thing to do. And then because it is at base of the Southern Alps, basically, people do like to use Queenstown as a base camp for exploring the region. And last but certainly not least is the ultimate college town where there are the young people, Wellington, back up to the South Island. From here, you can take a ferry across to Picton, but Wellington is really, truly a beautiful place situated in a harbor. It is the third largest city in all of New Zealand, just after Christchurch. It is the capital of New Zealand, and it also just so happens to be the world's southernmost capital of a sovereign state. Another thing that's interesting is that it has a temperate maritime climate and is known as the world's windiest city by average wind speed. So that's an interesting fact. And according to Lonely Planet, it's the coolest little capital in the world. So, hey, but it used to be a Maori settlement. So great history with the Maori. And if you like to explore the Maori culture and traditions, you can go to the museum there in the Wellington Seaport area. And while we're on the habit of talking about Wellington's great prestige, it's also considered one of the world's most livable cities according to Mercer Quality of Living Survey. So it was ranked number 12. And I did enjoy taking this little tram up the hill to the Space Observatory, the Botanic Garden at Wellington. It's a pretty good viewpoint and lookout point to see around the harbor. I'll tell you, you can really relax up here at this botanical garden. And as we wrap up this list of the best cities around New Zealand, I'd also like to mention uh, one of my other favorites, Rotorua, and then there's Hamilton. 
Nelson. There's quite a bit of towns on the North Island that you may want to explore. And uh, anyways, thanks for watching this video from Island Hopper TV of the best cities in New Zealand. Take a look at some of our other videos and we'll see you on the next one.